This week on Tech Wrap, get Twitter, Facebook, and Hangouts notifications on your Galaxy Gear. Mashable's tech editor shares his thoughts on Google Glass. And it's time for another smartphone camera shootout. It's Galaxy S4 Zoom versus the Nokia Lumia 1020. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and this is TechRap. Samsung is updating the Galaxy Gear smartwatch this week. The update makes possible a much requested feature. Now, notifications from some third-party apps developers show up in full, which means you can get a new at reply on Twitter or a message on Facebook, and you get more than just an alert that something is waiting for you on your phone. You'll be able to see exactly what came in. Other updates include Smart Relay, which gives you more control over your phone from your watch, and improvements to gestures that activate the clock. You lift your wrist and hold it to get your clock to work. In the US, AT&T and T-Mobile have released OS updates that bring Galaxy Gear support to the Galaxy S3, S4, and the Galaxy Mega. Watch out for that update soon, depending on your region. What's the best-selling Lumia phone out there? A report by Windows Phone App cross-promotion network Ad Duplex reveals it isn't any of the flagship smartphones. Not the 920, not the 925, or even the 1020. In fact, it's a phone at the other end of the lineup. Nokia's entry-level Lumia 520 accounts for 26.5% of Lumia phones in use Today, the Lumia 920 is a distant second at 8.8%, and another low-end Lumia phone, the Lumia 620, is third. The report also shows a breakdown of Windows Phone users by brand. Nokia dominates with 90% of the market. HTC is a far second at 7%. Samsung and Huawei are 1.8 and 1.3% respectively. Speaking of the Lumia 520, its successor, the Lumia 525, was quietly launched this week, nine months after the launch of its predecessor. Like the 520, the Lumia 525 retains the same form factor, a 4-inch 800 by 480 display, a 1 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon processor, 8 gigabytes of internal storage, and a 5 megapixel camera. The 525, though, gets a boost in RAM, 1 gigabyte versus the 512 MB on the 520. This will allow you to run more apps. Many apps, like one of our favorites, Temple Run, require at least 1 gigabyte to play. The phone goes on sale in Singapore on December 14th and will retail for $249. That's roughly 8,500 pesos. Remember the feature on the Moto X that allows you to say, OK, Google, to your phone and have it respond to your commands hands-free. While Google is bringing that functionality to Chrome users this week via the Google Voice Search Hot Word Chrome extension. Once installed, whenever you're on Google.com, you'll be able to just say, OK, Google, and then your search phrase without having to type anything into your keyboard. OK, Google, what is five tablespoons in ounces? Five U.S. tablespoons is 2.5 U.S. fluid ounces. If Google redirects to your country-specific Google page, scroll down to the bottom right corner of the screen and navigate to Google.com. Another round of U.S.-based developers received invites to the Google Glass Explorer program. The device, which has yet to receive a consumer release date, is available to pre-approved developers for $1,500. We spoke to Mashable's technology editor Pete Pachal in New York. Here's what he had to say about Google Glass. One day, I'm thinking far future-wise, yes. Um, we're going to have some kind of Google Glasses uh, interface that's just going to be so seamless and natural. Uh, I think this is a step toward that. I think next year we're not going to see the vast majority of people wearing these. No, it's not a gimmick. There's there's a real, there's a real, I don't want to say need, but there's a real advantage to wearing a, a head-mounted display that's tied directly to the internet, and not just the internet, but the major services that we use. There's now a Twitter app for Glass, there's a Facebook app for Glass. I mean, just think about it. You're out with your friends, you snap some photos and videos, a few taps, 
It's all on Facebook. You never had to pick out your phone. Um, you never had to fire up anything, really. When shopping for a new smartphone, my checklist goes like this. In reverse order, how stunning is the display? How long does the battery last and can I replace it? How does the phone look? How does it feel in my hand? How powerful is the phone? Can it run all my apps? And right up at the top of the list, how well does the camera perform? Smartphones aren't just a messaging tool anymore. They are the go-to device for capturing life's best moments. Manufacturers are aware of this, and as we've seen over the last year, are producing more specialized smartphones that are more camera than anything else. Two standouts in 2013 are the 41 megapixel Lumia 1020 from Nokia and the 16 megapixel Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom with 10 times optical zoom. While both devices represent completely different classes of products, we thought we'd put both phones in the tech rap battle ring for a head to head battle. Round 1 Outdoors. On a bright sunny day with blue skies, we shot the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. While we prefer the vibrant images produced by the Lumia 1020, the S4 Zoom produced more color accurate shots. The 1020 also blew out some of the bright portions of the photograph. The slow shutter on the Lumia 1020 also meant that moving subjects were not as sharp as on the S4 Zoom, also evident in this shot of Pensacola Beach. The S4 Zoom was able to freeze the waves, the Lumia 1020 faltered. The Lumia 1020's tendency to produce shots that are slightly bluish in tint and with more vibrance and contrast isn't always a bad thing. These shots of the US Capitol came out better on the Lumia. The same can be said about this eagle statue in New York. But the extra contrast can be too much at times. Look at the darker shadows on this shot of a Pensacola hotel during golden hour, and of this portrait taken one mid-afternoon in Central Park. While we're all for vibrant colors and saturated images, we'd still have to give this one to the S4 Zoom because of its ability to produce accurate colors without blowing out the highlights. Round 2, Backlit Situations. We took these photos mid-afternoon at Central Park. Shooting into the light, the Lumia 1020 was able to compensate a bit better, bringing out the buildings in the foreground despite the harsh backlighting, but again blowing out the highlights. The same area on the Zoom's photo was fine. Round 3, Depth of Field. Among the phones we've tested this year, the Lumia 1020 produces the best bokeh, with stunning depth of field. Compared, however, to the Galaxy S4, its ability to focus on subjects real close is not as good. In this photograph of an art piece which we shot at the museum in DC, the 1020 outperforms the S4 zoom from the same focusing distance. Its auto white balance also produced more accurate colors. We shot these bridge rails in Central Park. Again, the 1020 demonstrates its ability to take shots with better depth of field. Round 4, Night Shots. We shot this mini concert one evening at the first Friday fair in Phoenix, Arizona. Consistent with the way it handles shots in natural light, the Lumia 1020 produced shots with heavier contrast, making them slightly more vibrant. Both phones struggled in low light, and it was very hit or miss. In this shot of salt and pepper shakers, and again of these neon lights, both photos performed reasonably well. But both struggled with moving subjects. Here, the 1020 shot was slightly better as it handled the glare from the backlight better. But in this shot, the zooms was better. The 1020 struggled to focus. We declare this round a tie. Round 5, Zoom. There's no way the S4 Zoom can lose a round named Zoom, even if it's up against a 41 megapixel shooter that's theoretically high res enough to allow cropping. Nokia calls it reframing. Shoot first, Zoom later is the sales pitch. We gave it a try. We shot this at Central Park from a rock about 10 meters up. Our subject was about 100 meters away. On the S4 Zoom, we zoomed in on our subject all the way to 10 times. And on the Lumia 1020, we shot wide and then reframed it after the fact. Side by side, the 1020's image isn't as sharp, doesn't have much detail, and looks like it's been stretched to its limit. The S4 Zoom is the clear winner here. Zoom in some more and you can even make out the words on the signboard, which on the 1020 is just a bunch of fuzzy pixels. It's pretty clear we've got two winners here. Which camera is better depends on what you need. For everyday photos, I like the Lumia 1020 because of its ability to take photos with creamy depth of field. As seen in these shots, DOF plays a big part in giving oomph to otherwise flat photos. I didn't mind so much sacrificing color accuracy for a bit more vibrance, neither did I mind the occasional blown out highlights. What I did mind was the time it took in between shots, roughly 2-3 to seconds each time. 
If you're into artistic shots and have the time to set up and compose your shots, get the Lumia 1020. But don't get the phone for the 41 megapixels. It did not make a significant difference in our tests. On the other hand, if you're looking for a more flexible camera that can zoom, the S4 Zoom is the phone for you. When I was covering Pacquiao versus Rios in Macau, the Zoom was my camera of choice. Even if I sat a few rows back from the action, I was able to capture photos like these. Continuous mode was very helpful when my subjects were moving a lot. The Zoom was also the only camera that could capture these images of the Statue of Liberty from a ferry that was sailing about half a kilometer away. No other smartphone camera today can capture images from that range. Finally, you've got to hand it to Samsung for developing both an image engine that can produce color accurate images and software that provides greater control over manual settings. We like choosing winners at the end of our tech rap battles. We like to be ballsy and like to make those tough controversial decisions. But in a matchup between two great cameras that cater to different kinds of users, this time around, we'll let you be the judge. What camera would you get? Let us know online with the hashtag TechRap. And that was TechRap. Follow Rapplo.com on social media, join our conversations online, and send us emails. All the details are below. If you're looking for new or old episodes of TechRap, you can log on to our website. It's Rapplo.com slash TechRap. Until next week, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.